So welcome to another video from theplayersaid.com. My name's Alexander, and I'm here on my own today doing a solitaire or solo review of Aces of Valor from Legion War Games. Um, so this was kind of part of our Guns of August event of 2023, which somewhat materialized, but really kind of didn't. We played one game together, and we played a few different solo games, so we might do a little wrap-up of that um, with kind of what we did, but... It, August uh, and September were just crazy for us, and so we didn't have a lot of gaming time um, to kind of get through some of the ones we wanted to, but anyway, that's a, a, for, for another day. But basically, I wanted to sit down and play Aces of Valor and kind of show you how it works. Uh, I played through uh, a bunch of it, and uh, I thought it would be... A, a, I was hoping that Grant would be able to get to it and we could sit down together, but that's not the case, but uh, this is a solitaire... Aerial World War One kind of tactical game. Um, so what you're going to do in this game is you have a squadron of um, you know biplanes, uh, and you can play as either the French, uh, you can play as the U.S. in this one, or you can play as the British. And those are all obviously on Tant's side, or you can play as the Germans, uh, as the Central Powers side. And it, it, so this is West Front, obviously. Um, so you, you you know there's no there's nothing else going on anywhere else in this game, and you pick one of those factions to play as, and you're going to guide that squadron through um, either a short, medium, or a long campaign. Each of those those campaigns, you're going to draw a mission card, um, and that's going to dictate what it is that you're sorting to go and do. You're going to go through that sorting procedure, and then. Uh, resolve all of that, any combats, any kind of mission resolution, uh, and then kind of get back, and then it's, you know, restoring your planes, keeping your, uh, your guys, your pilots fresh, promoting them if needs be, that kind of a thing as they grow and get skills over the course of a campaign. And then at the end of a campaign, you're going to adjudicate how many kind of victory points you've got, what level of success that looks like, and it's about the friends that you made along the way and the story that you had. And I say that because this is partly in the style of one of those kind of um, chart-flipping, dice-rolling, narrative-style solitaire games. And this has a bit more to it than that, uh, that I found to be quite interesting. But, it, you know, if that's not your favorite style of solitaire game, uh, you know, maybe this isn't going to be for you. If you do like that style of game, so I think about things like the submarine games from Greg Smith, or his Night Fighter Ace series, or even Target for Today, Target for Tonight from Legion War Games, that style, where it's, it's almost like an RPG, where it's like, the more you put into it, the more you kind of get out of it. Uh, but, you know, if you boil it down, you roll on a chart, see what happens. Okay, cool. And then it's like, then I make some choices about, you know, how I fire, what I fire, how far I'm willing to push my luck with fuel expenditures, that kind of stuff. Um, it's that style of a game. Now, what I find to be very interesting in this one, uh, that, that uh, over maybe some of the other games out there, is that this has a really neat uh, and as far as I'm concerned, fairly unique combat resolution mechanic. So, when you get into combats, and you stay in combats at expense fuel, which that's also kind of a strategic consideration if you're kind of on a, on a longer mission, and you might have like slow bombers with you as well, and fuel might be at a premium after a, couple, a combat or two. But the way that combat works is that you have this tactical chart, and you're going to go through three rounds at most of combat, and basically you're going to roll for initiative uh, for each one of the planes in the combat, and some of the combats end up with a lot. And then, you know, there's bonuses based on if you surprised the enemy force or not, or you might get a bonus from your, um, your pilot's air skills, things like that. And you're basically going to roll, and then there's this there's this chart matrix, and you put you lay them all all the, all the fighters out in the order that they kind of go from um, highest number to lowest that you've rolled. And basically, you have to attack the next lowest enemy aircraft. And so it's very abstract that there's not like positioning in that way, but the positioning and the maneuvering is all abstracted into this kind of chart of like 
the order that you're going in. So someone who's like at an 18 is deemed to have a better position on the enemy's next best pilot, basically. And so then you're going to roll some dice to try and attack, add modifiers to that, and then you're going to, you know, if you do hits, you're going to convert those hits into damage, and you're going to roll damage and see what happens. Do you do anything meaningful? Is it superficial? Do you shoot them down? Does the pilot make it? That kind of a stuff. Uh, and, but the way that you go down this line ends up with, it, it, it's a thesis of the initiative in combat is almost more important than like what you're doing, like shooting wise. You still need to shoot well, but if you don't have initiative on anyone, your guys at the bottom, where there's no one that they can attack at a lower position, they can't do anything. They're, they're, they're the guys who are you know, straggling behind or they're the ones who are being tailed. Um, there's literally no one in their arcs to shoot. And so the combat resolution in this one I thought was really interesting, especially compared to a lot of the other um, solitaire games out there where, you know, ch chuck some dice, do you hit or not, right? It still has an element of that, but the way that the initiative system works means that there is a lot of tension in rolling those initiative rolls uh, and then resolving that combat. And when you have like their best guy tailing your best guy and if he rolls really well your best guy might not make it and so there's there's just a lot of really cool um, elements to that part of uh, of the game that I really enjoyed uh, but most of the rest of the game if you've played any games like this really easy to pick up um, especially if you have any kind of a familiarity with it I found the rules to be um, very easy very simple to learn um, and there's there's plenty of good learning videos out there that they'll just you can see oh this is how this person did it and that's just how you do it right it's not complex but basically you're gonna you know you you form your little these are the guys from my squadron that are gonna go out and you're gonna move through certain areas and there's kind of a fixed tactical map that has a bunch of uh, counters on it that represent different airfields or different enemy positions and some of those might move through the course of a campaign. And you're going to launch and you're going to fly along seeing if there's you have any kind of encounters along the way as you fly over kind of enemy territory or no man's land where there's kind of the trenches. You'll get the heavy density of um, anti-aircraft fire. It's still not that dangerous. Um, it's still quite difficult for them to hit you, but if it does, not great. Uh, and so you, you know, you, you're flying out, you go through this dangerous patch, and then you go and resolve your mission. And the missions are things like um, trying to raid enemy air bases to destroy their air forces, um, trying to go balloon busting, uh, trying to do photo reconnaissance, trying to go on a bombing run. Uh, and you don't have bombers in your squadron, but you'll get bombers put in and you have to escort them, and they're very slow and they have very bad initiative, and they, it uses up more fuel because you can't go as fast because they're heavy laden. So, and you lose a lot of points if they get shot down. Uh, and you're going to, you know, you fly around, do your mission, and all the different mission types have a slightly different mission resolution, and the play aids in the game are really good, are really helpful for kind of going through that. And then you turn around, and you got to fly back and do it all over again on the way home. Um, but most of the missions don't take all that long to do, especially once you kind of get into it. Um, and, and you've played a mission or two, things go along at a good clip. Um, there's lots of chance for things to happen, but some of the chances aren't very high, so a lot of the time nothing happens um, for a few rolls. And what that means is, is that you kind of go through three or four areas very quickly, and then you'll get to one, and then some, some action's going to happen. And then you might move on for a couple more, and then some more action's going to happen. So it's got a nice ebb and flow to it as well. Um, and uh, the, the other thing that I thought was very interesting about the game is that as you uh, as you progress through missions, the way that the scoring system works in this is that you know if you're doing like a photo reconnaissance mission, you're going to go, you're going to roll on the photo reconnaissance chart when you get there, and you're going to get a certain number of points. If you get into any combats and shoot down any enemies, you might get some points for that. Um, and then you're going to come home and basically you get mission points, you're like mission victory points. And what you have to do is you have to spend those mission points to either recover exhausted guys or to 
purchase campaign victory points. And you can only purchase campaign victory points like one time in, in the phase, so, and they're on a sliding scale. So the more points you buy, the more expensive it is. But what you can't do is buy the cheap one, buy the cheap one, buy the cheap one, right? You can only make one victory point purchase. And so you're always faced with these decisions. If you have a really successful mission, you've got like eight or nine points, you might spend all of those on victory points very easily and it'll get you like three victory points, which is a lot for campaign points. But then you don't have any points left over to like recover guys. So then you're dipping into other pilots, uh, and at some point you have to get these guys back, and at some point you have to spend points to get your guys kind of recovered and their machines, um, their, their, their planes back in the air, basically. And so that little, the economy is very interesting. And at the end of my missions, I always found myself like trying to weigh up, okay, am I trying to score all the points here, uh, or am I trying to like keep my my squadron slightly more balanced, and I really enjoyed that aspect of the game as well. You know, it's only a small little part, but it adds a little extra layer into kind of what you're trying to get out of the campaign, which I thought was really fun. Uh, but uh, I have waffled a, a little bit here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how the game works, and then I'll wrap up with a few final thoughts. So here's a look at the map. Um, I apologize profusely for the terrible glare in this. For some reason today I could not get a decent shot of this. So we've got a big old patch of glare over here, but hopefully it's not that big a deal. And one kind of down here, but these are just number, numbered holding boxes for initiative, which we'll go through here in a second. But uh, the map is broken up into a few different sections. Um, so we have, this is kind of the, the geographical, reasonably abstract uh, campaign map. So this has a number of starting air airfields. So we have this one, which is our home base. There's another one down here, another one down here. And you might get reassigned to those different bases. And that's just gonna change your paths as you go um, doing missions. Um, these, This is your kind of, your rear area. Then there's this trenches area. Then this is this enemy rear area. And you can see these have these uh, flak uh, or anti-aircraft units. You have to roll for anti-aircraft naturally over all of those spaces. How many other ones have like targets? So when it says, hey, you have to go and bomb a rail yard, well, you have to roll a die to see which of the rail yards it is that you have to go after, right? So that, that's, that's pretty much what that whole map is. Um, so you're gonna move your flight marker around and roll on charts to see kind of what happens there. But your flight marker corresponds to which of your airplanes you chose to go on the current flight. And then when you got, get into combat, you have this very abstract, um, initiative-based uh, combat chart that you're going to use. And there's a few different tracks up here for campaign mission track. Uh, so this is how many missions are in the short campaign, medium campaign, and long campaign. That also affects your victory um, threshold, how many points you need. You need more points on a longer campaign, obviously. Um, this is the mission turn track. Uh, typically, all of your missions are going to be like 24 turns long, which looks like that's a lot, and it kind of is. Uh, but if you start getting in your bombers and um, weigh, weighing down your planes with ordnance, if you use the optional rules, it's less. And you can use some of these up um, with bad events that happen, or if you linger too long in combat, things like that. And then there is a VP track up here. And you're going to gain mission points uh, by shooting guys down on missions or succeeding at your objectives of that mission. And then you're going to spend those mission points into campaign victory points. Um, which is something I actually really enjoy because how you convert those, but you also have to spend those points, the mission points, to recover damaged planes and things like that. And, and do those repairs. So there's a little micro-economy, which is something I really appreciate in something like RAF Battle of Britain from Decision Games. Uh, and there's an element of that here, which again, I really like. So um, the nice part about this game is that you have your sequence of play printed on the map, and you have your combat sequence printed right here as well. Uh, and generally speaking, once you've read the rules, you can pretty much just play off of this. Um, there are not a lot of particulars that aren't explained on the play cards. 
Um, so basically, you're going to move the little mission campaign mission marker. Let's say you were on you completed two missions, one two. You're going to go up to mission three, and you're going to um, draw a mission card. And this one says, "Hey, it's a bomber escort mission." <clears throat> um, so this is what a mission looks like. A little picture on it tells you the title, and then it tells you kind of what it is that you're trying to do on this mission. So this particular one, you will take four fighters and you're going to randomly draw for two bombers that you will have to escort. And you have to escort the bombers to the enemy headquarters and conduct an attack. Um, so the uh, German HQ is right here because we're going to play as the British this time. Uh, there are French and Americans and you would play as those as well. So we're going to mark this as the mission objective. So this is the mission objective. So we have to fly from here all the way over the, to this map, do our bombing run and then fly all the way back and hopefully not die. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that's 18 turns right there, just if we don't have any distractions. And that gives us basically, well, it gives us like anywhere up to a maximum of six turns to play with, with staying longer in combat or um, having fuel expenditure through bad things that happen to us, um, or if we wanted to kind of have another go at certain things. Um, or just kind of potter around doing other bits and pieces. Um, so when you're traveling across the map, your timeline looks kind of sketchy. But when it's like, hey, do a, a balloon busting raid, that gives you time to like go and do a whole bunch of these and then come back again, for example. So that's what a mission card looks like. Uh, and then what we're going to do is we're going to check the weather. Currently we have clear weather. We just roll a d6. And here, let's get my very cursed dice tower out. And we're going to roll a four, so we actually go to light clouds instead of clear weather. And uh, then you're going to choose which aircraft you're going to take on the mission. Let's say we're going to take these four. We have to pick up two bombers, um, and there is a random kind of uh, selection of bombers here. So I'm just going to roll the dice to see which ones we get. Uh, we're going to get this one, and then we're going to get this one. So these two bombers come along with us uh, and they have a one and a two ground attack value respectively. The three value on the counter is their kind of performance rating. That's their like agility, maneuverability and speed. Three is very bad. Our fighters have a seven that's much better. Um, however, they have this seven frame rating or structure rating. Because they're a bit bigger and bulkier they can take a few more hits, um, is effectively what that is. It's harder to like, kind of tear them apart. Whereas our little fighters are a bit more fragile, they're a bit smaller, a bit lighter, a bit more nimble. They have a five structure rating. It's much easier to take damage uh, on those. So this is what our flight consists of, and that is represented by our flight counter over here. Um, and then what we're gonna do is we're simply gonna We've got our uh, mission turn. It's going to be turn one. This starts on the map, and we're just going to fly over there. We're going to pick whichever route that we want to go through. So if you wanted to try to avoid uh, certain things or make a more direct route, you could do that or go a more circuitous route. That's also possible. So we're just going to fly over here, and then we're going to roll on our little events chart. And that is a number of... Uh, the journeys back and forth, it's a lot of move and roll, move and roll, move and roll. Um, however, when you do roll events, which are quite rare in this one, um, you get into some um, pretty spicy engagements, is what I would say. So, you have this flight event check table on this big flight phase uh, bifold, and basically if you're in a friendly rear area, you're going to roll 2d6, uh, and on an 11 or a 12, you're going to find an event. Well, we're in the friendly rear area, which is this section, and we're just going to roll our little 2d6. And hey, look at that. We did not roll enough. We rolled a 9, so that's not enough. We're going to advance the turn marker one space, which is effectively expending fuel, to move one more. We're still in a friendly rear area, so we're going to do that again. Hey, I also did not roll enough on that one. So we're going to advance the turn marker again and go again. And we're going to roll. So now, however, we're on the trenches. So it is more likely we're going to get an event uh, in the trenches. 
Uh, I still did not though, I don't believe. It's very unlikely that's six. So then we're going to advance the turn marker and then we're gonna move on more space. Now, we're gonna roll on the trenches, but we also have this enemy AA fire. Uh, so enemy AA fire is still pretty sporadic. I think this World War I, it's not quite so specialized as it, as it became. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna roll for AA ground fire. Um, so we're gonna roll a D6 to see how much AA fire there is. And I rolled a three, which means there's actually none. Um, so they, they were shooting at us, but they totally missed. If, for example, I had rolled a six, there would be heavy AA fire. And so what we're gonna do then is we're gonna roll three dice, heavy three, and every six is gonna be a hit. And uh, I didn't roll any hits, wonderful. But if you'd rolled hits, you would then roll on your damage charts. But that's, uh, and if you have heavy clouds, which we don't, we've got light clouds, we minus one. So, bam, 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 bam. Uh, and you're gonna roll those attack dice against each aircraft in the flight. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So you're gonna roll those 3d6 against him, 3d6 against him, 3d6 against him. Uh, that is my understanding of that anyway. Uh, and so, that, that, that's triple A. Then you're gonna roll for your regular event over the trenches. Uh, let's see, we rolled an eight. Hey, uh, I think that's still not enough. Over trenches, a two through eight is no event. Nine through a 12, we'd roll on the event table. And the event table is over here. And so we're gonna move our turn track on and we're gonna keep flying. And you're gonna keep going through things as you get over, most of the action is over the trenches. Um, as you go back over to um, the enemy rear, it becomes, it's like, this is the least likely to experience anything. This is somewhere in the middle, and this is the most likely for events, which I think is really interesting. Um, but you're going to keep flying over here, keep checking for events, keep spending your fuel that's going to keep going up. And then uh, over this target, you're then gonna do the same thing. You're gonna check for an event. You might have to fight some guys and then you're gonna do this bombing run uh, where you're gonna roll uh, your bomb checks to see. Uh, and there is a, uh, a chart for that. Here, let me just pull that up for you. Here is our, uh, here is our uh, bombing attacks and our strafing slash bomb damage as well. And you would roll on those. You're gonna accrue a certain number of victory points from uh, getting results on those. Uh, and, uh, and then you have to try to fly your way home and do that all the way back home. Now, if and when, <laughs> it's an interesting game because if and when you do find combat, and there can be whole sorties where you don't find combat, because, you know, it's World War One. It's not like the, the, the skies were like full of planes. But when you do find combat, um, it is a very unsure thing. Uh, so basically what you do is you kind of roll, you're gonna have a certain number of planes that pop up. So let's grab some little German planes here. Let's say it was these guys show up. And they're trying to fight against us. You're gonna roll to see who spotted who first. Uh, and again, this is all in this little combat chart. Uh, you're going to determine the detection, and there's this combat trifold, and you're going to roll a little detection test. So we're going to roll on 2d6, and I roll a 4, which isn't great. Enemy spots you and attacks if equal or greater force. Well, luckily they're not equal or greater. There's only three of them, and there's um, six of us. They know they're outnumbered, so they don't attack. But if they did, they would have a plus one to their initiative. So let's say that they did attack, um, just for the sake of an example here. Um, then what we do is we roll up for initiative of everything. Oh, and that's actually two or less. Oh, I rolled a four, but because we have, um, uh, it, we have bombers, we're at a negative two. Gross. So yeah. <laughs> and we add our best air skill. They have an air skill of a two. Yeah, not great. So we actually, this goes down to a two or less. So enemy surprise you and attacks at plus two 
uh, to the first round of initiative. So they are going to jump us, even though there's three of them. Um, they think they can get us and get us real good. So what you do is then you sit and you roll through initiatives. So to roll initiative, you're going to roll 1d6. You're going to add your performance rating to it. And you're going to add, this is very, very small on here. So there's this little 2-2 two -two on Manfred. The first two is your air-to-air -air skill, basically. And your second two is your ground rating, if you want to do ground strafing or dropping ordnance. So we're going to add the left-hand side to, um, to this. And then all the Germans are going to get an extra plus two because they rolled really well on initiative because they surprised us. So let's roll the Germans first. So the first guy, he's got seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, plus zero, so he's an eleven. So put him in the little eleven box. I know there's some glare over here. That's the eleven box, I swear. Uh, let's look at Manfred. Manfred's got a four, plus seven is eleven, plus two from his skill is thirteen, plus two from the surprise, he's at a fifteen. Uh, and then Carl, oh, he's got a big six, so he's got six and seven is thirteen, plus two is, 14, uh, is fifteen as well. So he, these guys are all the way up here. Now what we're gonna do is gonna we're gonna roll up the the English guys. So William, he's got a seven. No, oh, that's off the table. It's almost like I have a dice tower or something. I don't want to cover everything up. Uh, he's rolled a four. Here, let's put this over here. So f four and seven uh, is eleven. So he's down here. Uh, this guy has a 5 and 7 is a 12, so that's pretty nice. Next guy, Albert, he has, hey, I'm rolling really well now. I could have done this in the game. He has a 10. Uh, Alfred has an 8, not good. Uh, then we've got our crappy bombers, and remember we're adding our performance rating. So if you can shoot the bombers down, it's very poor, although I rolled really well. <laughs> He's at a 9, as good as he could do. Uh, wow, uh, and this guy's at an 8. Normally the bombers are like down here, uh, and they get picked off real quick. So now you've established the initiative, what you do is you go from high numbers to low numbers, and you must attack, uh, especially in the first round of combat, you must attack <clears throat> the closest person in initiative order to you. So what we're going to do is we're going to spend uh, this guy, uh, is, and there's, once again, we can solve the little chart. The charts are pretty good in this game. Um, it is the air to air chart, which is right here. So what we're looking at is the difference um, in initiative value gives us the number of guns that we're gonna shoot. So we're, uh, the difference here is one, two, three. So I look at the three column and I'm gonna roll three dice for combat. So uh, we'll do Carl first. Carl's going to shoot Philip. And we're going to roll three dice. And we're trying to compare it to this four slash six rating. Wow. Um, I rolled nothing but misses. Um, no amount of bonuses can help us with that. That's embarrassing. Uh, and Carl should be fired. So he's taken his action. Uh, he totally whiffed. And because of that, he goes to the action taken box. Uh, there's no, there's no kind of shooting back in this one, um, unless you're being, unless there's like simultaneous defensive fire from bombers and two seaters. But uh, he's done with, unfortunately. So next up is Manfred. He also has to attack Philip because that's the next lowest in initiative order. So he's also going to roll three dice because of the difference. <clears throat> However, he's got a plus two air-to-air -air skill, so he's going to add plus two to every single one of these dice, and it is very strong. Um, the Red Baron does not mess around, if you think about it that way. Uh, so we rolled uh, pretty decently. So we've got a five that goes up to a seven, a four that goes up to a six, and a two that goes to a four. So if we kind of turn our dice just so we can uh, remember that, what we're then going to do is we're going to compare these numbers to our hit ratings. And with this 4 slash 6 is, is that everything that is a 4 or more is one hit. Everything that is a 6 or more is two hits each. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 hits. Um, that was, we rolled decently, but our plus 2 air skill, very, very, very strong. 
So I'm going to roll five hits against this guy right here. Now to convert those kind of hits into damage, you're going to roll only one die, and you're going to add to it plus one for each hit beyond the first. So we're going to roll one die, and we're going to add four to it, because we scored five hits, one beyond the first. One gives us a die, and the extra ones give us plus one to this die. And I'm trying to exceed his structure rating, which is a five. So I roll the die. What did I get? I rolled a four. We're going to add four to that, which is an eight. And then we consult our little damage chart down here. Uh, we rolled an eight, which is greater than his structure rating by three or more. He is immediately destroyed. He is dead, dead. Um, he is destroyed. He goes into the little destroyed box. Uh, that's very bad. Um, what we end up doing then is that we roll on our uh, pilot check table to see if he's dead or not. Uh, so we're going to roll a d6. We rolled a 2, which means he is KIA. He's, he's no longer of this world, unfortunately. Um, why that's bad is because at the end of the mission, uh, uh, we are going to lose points for um, each friendly uh, fighter that was destroyed. You get negative 2. Um, if the pilot had made it back to base, because we had rolled uh, really well and he would able to like do a forced landing and somehow get home, um, it would be only minus one, but that's going to be negative mission points for us. Not good. Don't want to do that. But he's taken his action, and he's good to go. So then when we go down here, well, this guy doesn't have an action to take because he's been destroyed. Uh, and then we go into this box, and you basically keep going down the line. And what's going to happen is, is you know, um, you can't attack someone in the same box. Uh, this guy has no one to attack. There's no Germans below him, so he pretty much can't do anything. Uh, this guy is going to take a shot at this guy, and he can't go lower. You have to attack the closest, but lo uh, lower down from where you are. Uh, because he's only one space away, you only get two dice. Uh, he's got no bonuses. So, ooh, we rolled really well, though. <laughs> so we got three hits out of that. That was about <laughs> as good as I was going to get. So we're going to roll one d6, and we're going to add only two, because it's three hits minus one. And I rolled a two. Plus two is four. Four does not um, exceed five. So I, I shot him, but like, not, not I, I, you know, it was like misses, or we just kind of tore through a little bit of, um, a bit of the kind of uh, canvas. You know, n nothing serious, basically. His action's done. None of these guys have anyone that they can attack, so they're all done as well. Then we go and we do a little event. Uh, at the end of the combat round. And basically the event is going to check to see if the enemies stick around or if something crazy happens. And there is a little um, combat events table that kind of tells us how we do that. Uh, right here. So we're going to roll 2d6 on this one. Let's see, let's roll a 2d6. We rolled a 6. Oh, that is modified by, if we're in the enemy rear, which we are, so that's down to a 5. Um, if we're over an air airfield space, another negative two. That's not the case. So we're down to a five, five or seven, and any enemy aircraft remain for another round of combat. Great. If it had been a four or less, enemy fighters arrive, and you roll a more show up, uh, which is very bad. Um, but then you're going to do second round of combat. You're going to do all that again. You're going to roll new initiatives. Now, in the second round of combat, the Germans don't get that extra plus two from the surprise detection attack. We're in a dogfight. You can't surprise people again. Uh, so we're just going to roll straight. We're going to set them all up again like that, and we're going to do those descending attacks. Hopefully you roll well. Hopefully they roll poorly, and you can get some shots off at them. Uh, it's, it's, it's very common that you'll get surprised if you're escorting bombers or two-seaters because you're just flying much slower and lower. Um, if you get to a round three, that costs you an extra fuel. So you have to spend an extra fuel, uh, which is just move the mission marker up one more. Um, <clears throat> but basically, you're going to get guys damaged, you're going to get guys killed, uh, and it's going to go very poorly for you from a campaign standpoint if you roll anything like me. Um, if you do end up with guys who are damaged in the current flight, let's say everyone else survives, um, just hypothetically, every time you move, you have to roll to see if this guy crashes. 
because um, he's damaged and the planes weren't that sturdy back then and uh, didn't have the same kind of damage control systems that we have now and like support available and so you have to roll <laughs> and like he might just drop out of the sky as things just get worse uh, but you have to make it all the way back home we've got one guy dead but likely another one, or he might at least crash in friendly territory. We're going to lose some victory points from this. Hopefully we did a successful bombing run. We're going to gain a few points from that. Uh, and so you then would spend your victory. You've got your victory points. Let's say or your campaign points, let's call, mission points, that's what they're called. Let's say you picked up eight bombing points, uh, but you we've lost three because we had a guy killed and another guy crashed. Let's just say that. But he made it home but he lost the plane. So we've got five mission points to spend. After, after the mission's done, and after you do a post-mission event, uh, these are optional, but I would recommend them. They're really fun and just like add some extra kind of cool theme and chaos to the game. Uh, post-mission, you're gonna spend your points that you have. And there's a little chart here. That chart is also uh, printed on the map. And so you can do one kind of conversion of, uh, of, of mission points into campaign points. So if you happen to have 15 mission points, which is a lot, you can buy four victory points. It, you can purchase one campaign point for one uh, mission point, but the more you buy, it becomes exponentially more expensive, which is uh, tough. <laughs> it, and basically that's just, it's hard to get lots and lots of victory points. Unless, of course, you shoot down lots of enemies. If you shoot down lots of enemies, and things like that. Uh, each enemy fighter that you destroy, you're gonna get one plus the enemy pilot's air skill. So most of the time that's one, but if you can shoot down the Red Baron, he's worth three. Um, and any time uh, you destroy enemy bombers, you get lots of points for that, but that's hard to do because you have to get through all of their fighters and then get the bombers, uh, and it is rare that they're unescorted. So, you then you're spending this, but you also all of these guys who flew on the mission go to recovery. You have to spend uh, points to get these guys back, and so you can spend to guys to get guys back. If you have a bunch, you could upgrade aircraft, and they get like a plus one plus one. Um, oh no, that's that's for shooting guys down. Um, you can go from so for example, these are bombers. We don't need the bombers. Um, these are all camels, uh, sop with camels. These are like the medium. Uh, airplanes, you can upgrade one to go to the dolphins, which I don't have out, apparently. Good for me. Uh, and they, they become, I think they become an 8.5. Uh, they, become, they, become, they become better performance ratings. Uh, but you can also upgrade, you can increase your skills by shooting enemies down uh, so that you can then have good performance and you can get good bonuses to combats. And, and you know, like all good campaign games, your guys grow. They get better, they get shot down, it's like a punch in the gut, um, and, and it's frankly wonderful. But that was a very long explanation of, generally speaking, how this whole game works. Uh, what we'll do is wrap up with a few final thoughts. So that was a look at the map. Um, was, you know, very functional, very easy to read, very easy to pass. Everything worked really well with it. They did a really good job on that. I think with, with Solitaire games... It's kind of a mixed bag, and what I mean by that is, is I either want my solitaire game to look really nice so that I can like really enjoy it, uh, and like it's it's you know I can pour over it and kind of sit there with it, or I want it to be extremely like functional and usable and have excellent utility. And this falls into both of those categories. It's both nice to look at. Uh, it's a lot of charts on the map, sure, but it is also extremely usable. Um, the functionality of the map is kind of off the charts. It's got everything on it that you need. There's a couple plays that you have on standees or, or kind of off to the side, but it is, you know, even with a bunch of kind of planes on the board, every, like the boxes are big enough where everything, you can kind of see what it is. Everything was very usable, and I had a really good time with um, playing with it. it was, the ease of use with the components was great. Um, all in all, though, I had a very enjoyable time playing this. I understand that this style of game isn't for everyone, um, but it is for me. I really enjoy this style of game because it's very relaxed in its nature, and I feel rewarded 
for putting kind of a bit of effort into it and following the guys specifically through their journeys. You get an extra layer of narrative out of it. Also, the game is lethal. Like, it's awful. Everyone dies. Uh, I, and maybe I'm just a very bad uh, squadron commander, but good gracious. I couldn't, I can't tell you how many guys kind of got shot down or, or just like fell apart. And that's something that I actually appreciate in a solitaire game like this, because if this style of game is too easy, I kind of go off them and I get a bit boring uh, and I'm not really as engaged. But I mean, anytime you get into a serious combat, to me it's very tense because I have watched like my entire flight disappear with some bad initiative or some unlucky damage rolls. I mean, it'll get wiped. You'll lose one guy, and then that one guy can't attack their guy, so now this guy's healthy, and he's gonna attack your next guy, and you'll watch your dudes melt. And I really loved seeing that in combat, where, you know, it was, okay, we, we shot the wing leader, and then, their forces kind of melted away. We were able to pick them apart and they kind of, you know, we d destroyed, you know, we, we dominated this air combat. You can do that to the enemy as well, if you, it, conversely. And I liked that that was kind of an option. And I've seen that happen as well. I had some very successful combats. I've had some very bad combats. And sometimes you get a little bit in between where you might do a little combat and then they'll break off and leave. But knowing that it can be very lethal and watching the domino effect happen when it does, it was, it was choice. There was something really cool to see about that and interesting, you know, and then you, and then you get to like, you roll on the table to see if your pilot survives. Spoiler alert, they won't. Okay, you know, parachutes in this game. But like, if they do, on the very slim chance that they do, if they're in enemy territory they get captured and you, you start losing points for those things and you can end up with a lot of negative points, uh, which is very bad. And so, the, I, I really appreciated that this game offered both some really fun kind of tactical narrative moments, but also had that good campaign arc that I look for in these kinds of games. I think about something like the DVG Leader series, where it's maintaining the quality of your uh, pilots. You don't have to maintain their quality in that same way, but it's still that you have to recover them and spend resources to do that. It looks slightly different, but uh, fun is functionally a similar type of thing that you're doing over the course of a campaign. And, and dipping into your victory points to be able to have to do that, that was, that was one of the, again, I come back to that, one of the really interesting parts of the game is, you know, instead of having these esoteric, you know, oh, I've got these, like, points to spend. No, no. This is your currency that you're going to buy your victory points with. So you can either buy less victory points and recover guys, or, you know, we'll do without you for a mission or two and get some more points. I, I really, really liked that uh, little interaction in the game as well. So, yeah, all, all in all, I had a blast with this. Aces of Valor from Legion War Games. Um, and I also really liked that it had all the options in it. You can play as the French, you can play as the US, you can play as the, the British, you can play uh, as the Germans. You can do all of that, um, and, and that's, I really liked that it just gave you that option. There's not a whole ton of difference, I don't think there's any difference between the factions, uh, other than the names, because uh, all of the different um, tiers of planes have the same statistics, and then I think they all have the same distribution of pilot levels. So a couple of really good guys, a bunch of mediocre guys, a couple of really crap ones. But uh, it's just some flavor, but I appreciate that they put that in because that's not an insignificant amount of planes and it's not an insignificant amount of counters in the game that it came with. But uh, like I said, all in all, I had a blast with this. I understand this kind of game isn't for everyone, but if you like this style of game, you should check this out. It was a blast uh, and it was fun to kind of keep set up and to keep coming back to and doing a mission here and there over the course of a campaign. So all that being said, um, check this out if you're interested in, but appreciate you very much for tuning in. I've been Alexander from theplayersaid.com.